Well, hey there, and welcome back once again to Richard's Toy Room. Today, we have a vintage 1980s robot. Um, the official name of this is the Starior's Cosmitor Sonic Control Dinosaur. His um, actual name is Deadeye. This guy. And then this little guy here, his name is Cricket. Now, here's the little uh, discs that you put into the top of his head here, and they shoot out of his mouth. This is a remote control. I don't know if you can see the antennas on here. But it's one of those, uh, literally, clicker. When you click it, it, it uh, inside it, it does a, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the uh, technology is called, but it's like the old TV clicker. When it, it makes a tiny little spark that uh, transmits off of this antenna here and controls the robot. Uh, I don't have the instructions for it, but I did watch a video on YouTube which gave me an idea of how it should work. Now, this here is not in the greatest shape. It looked like a kid or a dog or something chewed on the feet on this. But I did take it apart and check and it does emit a spark, so I'm assuming it should work. Put that off to the side. This, I did put batteries in it. It takes two C batteries. And then that's on, but as you can see, it does nothing. So I'm certain that, which is common in all these older toys with little motors in them, it's probably just the motor seized up. So what we're going to have to do is take this apart and see if we can fix it. And basically that is what this video is all about. Um, as you can see, I'll show you here on the uh, iPad. This is what he's supposed to look like. Complete. As you can see, he's missing his arms and he's missing some guns that go on uh, his head here and or not his head, but his uh, body and not his legs here. I think that's all that's missing from him, though. Um, he still looks kind of neat, and he's in really good shape, so I'm assuming that I can get this guy to work. So anyway, it shouldn't be too hard because it is all screws. I don't think anything is sonic welded or glued. Just a matter if we can... Get him apart or not. I'm thinking this gray part here will come out without having to take the whole body apart, but I'm not sure about that. Actually, the more I look at it, I think it is going to have to come apart. Okay, well, I don't think you missed anything. I uh, was lazy, and I didn't want to look up how to clear the memory on this camera, and it uh, kind of made that decision for me. So, I went and took the opportunity to get a screwdriver that would break free this one screw that was giving us a problem earlier in the video. That's out now. So anyway, I also peeled back one of these stickers on the side here, and there is no screw under there, so I'm not 100% sure how those come off. They may just be pressed on, but we will uh, see how much we can get apart here without running around with those. So let's see what we got now. I 
I think I've got almost all the screws out. And the only thing, oh, there's one there, I see. Off from the back, actually, so that's just a slot. I don't know if you can see this here. The lay. Good thing I didn't pull on that, it would have broke. It's just, uh, it just moves freely on that slot there. And all the action is from the, uh, the wheel on the bottom. So, anyway, so we have this apart. Oh, this is interesting. she looks like or he looks like with <laughs> nothing else in it well that's actually good because now I can jump start this motor without having to have the whole stupid thing apart because I think that's what it's going to need to get going now there are those screws I took out up here earlier in the front are what holds the two halves of the motor together, so I really didn't have to take those out. They, they did nothing uh, in regards to taking this apart. But you do have two screws down here, and I'm not sure if I want to, you know, I don't know how many gears and things are in here. As you can see, there's also a uh, circuit board in here. Oops. So, that's always a possibility that something on there has gone bad. I don't have anything to really test those capacitors and resist. Well, I can test the resistors. But um, it would take a lot of uh, research. I'm going to have to look up the color codes and all that garbage. Um, Passers wouldn't be a big deal to replace if I needed to. I mean, I guess I could take a look and make sure there's no bad solder joints or something on it. There's a screw holding it in right here. But before we do that, we will uh, actually assume that it's just the electric motor in this thing that's screwed up and not the circuit board. And uh, sometimes, uh, all you got to do is kind of give them a jump start because they've been sitting for so long. So let's put the batteries back in and see if we can get this to respond. I believe this was on.
There she goes. Okay, need some oil. It's a little noisy. But it looks like everything's working on it fine. Every time you click this thing, it uh, gives it another command. I think if you click it, I'm not sure if it, if it counts clicks or if it's just a matter of sequential clicks. But if you saw what had happened when I clicked it, it would like just spin in a circle and I clicked it again, it would start walking and then when I clicked it again it stopped and this gear on the top here started flicking which actuates this uh, little uh, disc shooter. So I think what I'm going to do is carefully open this up and put a little bit of oil and maybe some grease on these gears and stuff to uh, because I'm sure they haven't been greased in 30 or whatever over odd years this thing is old. So, alright, so, I took it apart. Boy, I was lucky actually, because we've got all these little gears and they are all loose. So I'll just put a drop of oil on these axles in here, and that should be fine. And the other problem that we, I found, though, you won't be able to see this on camera. The motor, of course, the main drive of the whole thing, this gear is actually cracked. So I am going to put some super glue on it. I mean, you can see that it did work, so it's not like it's broken, but it probably slips. So if I put some super glue in the crack, let it dry, and then maybe put a little bit on the top there, maybe to just to, or the top and the bottom, keep it from moving, I think we'll be fine. But we will put a, you know, a little bit of oil on the rest of this stuff and in the motor here, and um, that should... Uh, should be sufficient at that point because everything else works so I like to use this stuff here it's called zoom spout oil it's made for uh, like air conditioning compressors and stuff like that at least that's what I was under the impression of but it's good for um, all kinds of bearings and motors and I use it on uh, radios and uh, record players that I, I repair and pretty much anything that needs a sewing machine type oil or a three-in-one type oil but this stuff is better because it doesn't get all gummy. You can get it at Walmart. I got this at Ace Hardware because I didn't know they had it at Walmart which obviously would have been cheaper. But anyway, so I'm going to put drop of that on the uh, whatever you call it, bearing shaft or something on this motor. It always, it always quiets them down. Alright, so here, put the batteries back in, before we put it all back together, plus I'm going to have to let that super glue dry when I don't want to run it with the super glue wet.
There we go. Pretty quiet. Of course, what you were hearing before was the gears all moving. And like I said, I will uh, put a little bit of oil on those. But it looks like it's going to work well. So, I won't bore you with all the details of putting it back together and oiling up the gears. Okay, as you can see, we're all back together. Uh, I did make one tiny error. I did epoxy the little tab on the battery cover in an attempt to strengthen it because it was starting to crack. But I didn't let the glue dry long enough. I probably should have let it dry overnight. Um, so when I went to go push it on, it kind of cracked again. Um, it hasn't come off, but it's still, it's got like a hairline crack in it. So I think what I'm going to do is, after I'm all done with this video, I will uh, epoxy it again and just let it sit before I put it back together. But anyway, as you can see, we have the, uh, the discs. It doesn't, it won't hold all the discs that it came with. Um, I've got, I don't know how many it originally came with, to be honest. Um, I think I've got maybe about 16 here, all together, 14 to 16, and I've got five left, so that shows you about how many it will hold. So I thought we'd do a demonstration, hopefully it'll work. There's the remote, and uh, here goes nothing. pretty far. Oh my god, I'm going to be chasing these all over the house. Oh. Woo. <laughs> That's pretty wild. figure out where all these little discs went. But anyway, there you go. Star ears. <laughs>